this is my final media summary for the course. Uh, it's bittersweet. I actually enjoyed doing these. So let's jump right into it. My article was by Robert Cashow from Yale University. It was entitled Zechariah 1 through 8 as a theological explanation for the failure of prophecy in Haggai chapter 2 verses 20 through 23. Now, he begins with the context of the text. He gives the prophecy of Haggai 2:20 20 through 23 that Haggai receives an oracle from Yahweh specifically for Zerubbabel that he was going to shake the heavens and and the earth and he was going to overthrow the political giants. He was also going to make Zerubbabel like a, a signet ring because he was the chosen one. Uh, now this prophecy, as we know, did not come to pass. It did not happen. And we have scholars who have submitted that the prophecy ultimately was applied to Zerubbabel's position uh, in relation to Yahweh's promise to David. Uh, that was in uh, 2 Samuel uh, chapter 7. And on the other hand, we have theologians who attribute the prophecy to Zerubbabel and Zerubbabel alone, just him. Now, this stood on the condition that Zerubbabel would be the Davidic ruler once Yahweh fully restored Judah as the political and religious ruler of the world. And we know that that did not happen. So the article was cash out arguing that the book of Zechariah chapter 1 through 8 gives the theological explanation for the failure, why the prophecy did not come to pass. And he examines the theology of the Judites uh, and what he concludes is that the understanding Haggai in the light of the editorial shaping of Zechariah 1 through 8 in accordance with the post-exilic uh, thought process uh, of Judites communicates that the ascendancy of Zerubbabel and the fullness of the restoration was a conditional promise. Uh, it, it wasn't unconditional. It was with a conditional promise. And it never occurred on the basis of covenantal disobedience to Yahweh. They, were, they disobeyed God. Now, in spite of the failure, Haggai is still an authoritative text to urge Judah to be obedient. Now, the second and final article of this media summary is entitled Prophecy and Monarchy in Haggai and Zechariah by Paul Reddit of the uh, Georgetown College, and he is also a part of the Baptist Seminary of Kentucky. Uh, Reddit attempts to examine the views of monarchy in Haggai and Zechariah. Now, he attempts to prove that the hope restoration of the monarchy under Zerubbabel changed into hope for a new king to be presented to Jerusalem by Yahweh. And Reddit shows the evolution of thinking in Haggai with the hope of Zerubbabel to become the monarch and for God to defeat the Persians. Now, these passages contribute to the Zechariah 1 through 8, where it's only given Zerubbabel the assignment. Uh, he calls it a kingly function. I, I call it an assignment uh, to rebuild the temple. Uh, he then goes to Zechariah's chapter 6, uh, verse 9 through 15, which notes that now Zerubbabel isn't mentioned. He's not mentioned. Uh, the passage mentions uh, the branch, which is a it's a regal designation. It's a, it's a title almost. And this passage was an anticipation of a peaceful future under a priest or a king. And then on the other hand, he provides that Zechariah's chapter 11, 12 and 13 depicted Jerusalem and the, Davi the Davidic collaboration with the Persians had been uh, disastrous to Judah and chapter 14 provides the portrayal of a future in which Yahweh defeats the enemies and rules from Jerusalem. Yahweh rules Jerusalem. Uh, there was this idea that human kings and human governments could rule above self-interest. Sounds super familiar. <laughs> well, this is my final media summary. Uh, like I said, I've enjoyed this throughout the semester. I am actually on quarantine, so I hope that uh, everything's uh, going well. Be blessed.